I just cannot wait to see my children. Let's see, what time is it? Oh, it's time. It's time. Oh. Hey guys, good morning. Happy Monday to you all. I hope you've had a splendid weekend. Um, it's so good to be here in our classroom today. Um, so let's get started off with our pledges. Now remember, I need you to let me know if you're here, right? So pop your name up, be putting your prayer request up there. I want to see all of those. I'm just checking the screen, so that's why I keep looking to the side. Let's make sure everything is good. Our lighting seems to be a little different today, but we'll just go with it. Let's see if I can adjust it. Woo, that's too bright. Just a little bit. Let's see if that's better for you. Let's see. Still getting used to the new camera. How's that? You like that? Does that look good? Maybe down just a little more. Seems a little bright. Okay. You ready? Let's get started with our pledges. Everybody standing nice and tall. My backpack was in the way. Let's move that over there. All right. Nice and tall. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. Good morning, Juliana and Colleen. Good to see you girls at church yesterday. Thank you for my big old hugs. Good to have you in class this morning. Hope you're feeling good today. All right, now let's do our Christian flag. Here we go. Ready? Nice and tall. No slouching. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Nice job. Good morning, Mr. Ken. Good morning, Miss Linda. How are you this morning? Hey, CJ. What's going on, man? All right, so now let's see. Here's my Bible. Let's pledge the Bible. You know what? Hang on one second, guys. I'm going to go flip this other light off, see if that helps them. Let's see. I think that may help a little. Does that help a little bit? Got to love those Monday morning adjustments. You know, my computer... It travels a lot on the weekend, so it has to readjust on Monday morning. All right, so here we go. We've got our Bibles. We're going to pledge. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Good job. Get it on your shoulders. You know it's tradition. Come on. Na, come on, Na, B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E spells Bible. Good job, great job. All right, so great weekend this weekend. We had our first upward basketball games. Went very smoothly. Um, you guys that were playing played great. It was a good day. And then we had some sweet friends at the church working on Night to Shine. Very productive day. It was a very productive day. And Miss Linda got her slideshow to work. So that was whoo, a big praise for the day. So a great weekend. Great weekend. All right. So now let's see. Can we sing Jesus Loves Me? Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good job. Good job. All right. Now, Mr. Ken has told us it is a beautiful day, 
And you know, when I went out this morning, it was still dark. I haven't been back outside since I let the dogs out way early this morning. So I'm going to take his word for it, and we're going to praise the Lord for this day. How about it? This is the day. Come on. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Woohoo! We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Good job. Good job. Hey, another announcement. You know, this coming Friday is Night to Shine. And I heard this morning Tim Tebow is going to be on K-Love, I think today, talking about Night to Shine. And I'm sure you'll hear about it all throughout the week. It's a big event. And it's not just at Cape Carteret. It's like huge. It's like nationwide, I think. Maybe even international. And so um, we can be praying for that event that's going to reach so many people with God's love. What a great opportunity. Yep. And then we have upper basketball games again this Saturday. We do. And then church on Sunday. So don't forget Wednesday night we have shift kids for second to fifth grade. We have student ministry for the older kids. So lots to be involved in to help us grow in God's word this week. So don't miss out on the opportunity, all right? Okay. Um, the other announcement is my nose is itching off. Somebody must be talking about me. That's what my grandma would say. Um, the other announcement is the girls said they want to study New Zealand. So I don't know if it was Juliana or Colleen, or it might have been Miss Melissa, but they said New Zealand. So on Wednesday when we come to chapel, make sure you bring your passport. I'm going to have a picture of the New Zealand flag that we can draw into our passports. Um, and we're going to learn about the country of New Zealand. I'm excited about that. All right. So don't forget your passport. Let's see. Is that all of our announcements? I think it is. All right, so get your hands up. Here we go. One little, two little, three little fingers. Four little, five little, six little fingers. Seven little, eight little, nine little fingers. Ten little fingers folded in prayer. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, thank you for all of my chapel time friends and how we get to come together. Lord, those that are close and those that are so far away. Lord, thank you for bringing us all together. Lord, I thank you for your word and how it leads us and teaches us. Father, today I want to lift up those who are sick. I want to ask that you be with those who are suffering. Lord, for those that are deployed and are away from their families right now, Lord, I ask that you be with them. And Lord, be with all the mamas and daddies that are at work today and bring families together this evening, Lord. And I just pray that you'll be priority in their conversations, that you'll be what they focus on. And so, Lord, be with us today as we focus on you. Keep us focused, Lord, and let our hearts be open to what you want us to hear. Lord, I ask that you be with all of those who are preparing um, for night to shine. Lord, for the volunteers who are working so hard to put it all together, for the honored guests that are going to be attending and their caretakers, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to serve them. And Lord, we just pray that the weather will be great and that it will just be a night that your love shines, that people see you, God, not us. It's not about us. We want it to be all about you, God. And so I pray that they will see you shining through us and, and all around us so that they come to know you better. Lord, I thank you so much for this day. It's in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. All right. So we are, let's see, we're going to do the weather. So where's my little cards? Here we go. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? Is it cloudy? Is it sunny? Is it gonna rain today? Well, it looks like it is a beautiful day. So let's go with a little, what's our song, Miss Linda? I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. Me and Miss Linda love that song. All right, so we're going to move this to sunny. And I hope it stays sunny all day. I'm going to look out my window real quick. Oh, yes, that big old sun is shining so beautiful. Woo, thank you, Lord, for a sunny day. All right, so we've established that. Well, let's, t let's look at what our friends should wear today. I don't know that it's going to be hot enough to go to the beach, do you? I don't really think so. 
And I don't think it's, I mean, while it's sunny, well, that's pretty good. How about we go with her, but she might need a jacket. Yeah? Okay. I don't think it's windy enough to do that. And it's not really cloudy. No, it's not really rainy. No. And it's not foggy. No. And it's not, it's not snowy here. It's snowy for some of our friends. And it's not, it's a little chilly out, but it's not that cold, right? So let's just say we'll go with this friend and maybe she can borrow this friend's jacket. You think that'd be a good idea? I think that's a good idea. All right. Good job. You guys are so smart. Now, how about days of the week? Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, there's even Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Good job. So yesterday was Sunday, correct? Okay. So today is, good job, Monday. That's right, good job. And tomorrow is Tuesday. Good. All right, so we need a number. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Today is the eighth day of February. So it is February 8th, 2021, and the season is still winter. Good job. Good job. All right. So we have our weather and our calendar done. Are we ready for our Bible lesson today? All right, let's see what Phineas and Eliezer are doing today. Let's just see. I'm going to grab my glasses. Let's clean them off a little bit. And let's just see. Oh, today I think they're going to talk about the high priest. I'm going to show you the high priest. Here's our cutout of the high priest. You see this? And every little thing he has on has importance. It is not just for show. It has a reason. So, you know what? You want to just hang him right here so you can see him all the time? And I don't have to turn the camera. Look at that. Hmm, that's pretty smart. All right. So, are you ready? Have you got your listening ears on? Turn them on. Turn them on loud and clear. Here we go. Phineas was thrilled to see the priests doing their work at the tabernacle each day. Each man knew what to do and when to do it, and all were clothed in white linen from head to toe. So, everybody had a job. They knew what to do, and what did they wear? White linen from head to toe. Doesn't look like this, does it? Hmm. The Bible says that white linen is a symbol of righteousness. It says that in Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. We are clothed in God's righteousness and serve as priest. Revelation 1, 5 through 6. So, let's talk about the garments of this fellow. At first, Grandfather was dressed like all the other priests, a white linen robe. But obeying God's command, Moses placed a long blue robe over Aaron's white one. Golden bells hung from the bottom of the robe. Between the bells were pomegranates. A pomegranate is a fruit which looks something like an apple, but inside it's filled with these, have you seen it? It's got like all these little bitty seeds and they have juice in them. It's really good. Over the blue robe, Moses placed a shorter one with sleeves. It was called an ephod or an ephod, some people say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. The beautiful linen material in it was woven with blue purple, scarlet, and fine hammered gold thread. Wow. It was fastened on the shoulders by large onyx stones. See these stones right here? See those? Huh. Wow. Looks like it might have been heavy, doesn't it sound like? Let's see. On each stone, the names of six of the tribes were engraved. So the high priest wore the names of the 12 tribes on his two shoulders. So there were six tribes here etched and six tribes here etched. So the 12 tribes on two shoulders. 
Interesting. Now, let's talk about the breastplate and the turban that he wore. The ephod had a belt made of the same beautiful material. See the belt right there? It's the very same as the rest. Um, Moses then fastened a breastplate over Aaron's chest. The breastplate was held in place with golden chains and laces of blue. In the breastplate were 12 precious stones, a emerald, a sapphire, a diamond, an amethyst, and other beautiful gems. St gems. That's, how, that's what happens when you say gems and stones together. You say gems. Look at that. All were set in gold, and on each of the 12 jewels was engraved the name of one of the 12 tribes. The high priest not only had the names of the tribes of Israel on his shoulders, but he also carried them near his heart. So that's why they put them on this breastplate. See? See the breastplate? So there's the 12 stones, each one representing a tribe. Near to his heart. That was important. Let's see. Now, finally, Moses placed a turban on Moses' head. And the turban had a gold plate in the front. Phineas was one was see, could see the writing on the plate, and looking closely, he saw the words, Holiness unto the Lord. Moses explained, God said these garments are to be glory and for beauty. For glory and for beauty. So see his turban? And see the writing on there that we were just talking about? There he is. Okay. Phineas, however, wondered... And he wanted his grandfather to tell him more about the special clothes of the high priest. Do those bells and fruit at the bottom of the robe have some meaning, grandfather, he asked. Oh, yes, my boy, they do. The bells ring as I walk about. And when the people hear the bells, they are reminded of the Lord God. They know that I am doing his work. And the bells speak to them of him. But if the bells stop tinkling, the people would know I had been struck dead or failing to approach the Lord in his appointed way. Because remember, they had to do everything exactly like God said or what would happen. They would die, right? So the bells jingling told the people that he was there in the presence of God. You think they were listening real close? Probably. Grandfather Aaron continued, The pomegranates remind me that I have been chosen to serve the Lord. The results of my service are as fruit to him. We do not wear bells to cause people to think about the Lord. We remind them of him by the things we say and the way we live. The bells tell us of our witness to him. So, in a way, it does make us think about him, but it reminds us of our witness to him, our obedience to him. Pretty interesting, isn't it? God wants us to be fruit-bearing Christians. We do not wear pomegranates, but by living close to the Lord Jesus and witnessing to others, we are bearing fruit for him, right? Why are the names of the tribes of Israel on the gems of your shoulders and on your breastplate, Phineas asked. Grandfather Aaron heaved a big sigh. <sighs> right? I am very responsible for the children of Israel, he explained. As their high priest, I stand between them and God. The shoulder is the place of the strength. The names, of, the names on my shoulders mean that I want to carry them through the hard places. Hmm. I talk to God about them in prayer, and I never forget that they are my responsibility. Their names in the jewels of the breastplate remind me that I hold them near my heart. The heart is the place of love. Again, Grandfather sighed and then smiled and said, I do love my people very much, he said. You know, our pastors today who care for their people, you know, they, they carry the weight of their, their people on their shoulders, don't they? They're, they feel burdens for them and they, they remember them and they pray for them. It's very important. Even though we don't wear, <laughs> Pastor Kevin doesn't wear this to church, right? But, but he does pray for his people. A good example of what Aaron is talking about. All right. So, how does that relate to Jesus? Well, if we were to look in Philippians chapter 2 and in Hebrews chapter 2 and chapter 5 and chapter 6 and chapter 7, 
we would see these things. Now, it says, Here is a splendid likeness of the Lord Jesus. He is the strong one, crowned with glory and honor. If you have received him as your Savior, he, the Lord of glory, carries you through the hard places. Just like our pastors do, but Jesus does that for everyone, right? Mm. He upholds you on his shoulder, the place of strength. He also has you near his heart because he loves you very much. What a wonderful high priest he is. I mean, I'm thinking Jesus was the best ever, right? Phineas did not have to ask about the beautiful material in the ephod. He had already learned the meaning of the colors from the curtains of the tabernacle. He understood why God said these garments were to be for glory and beauty. The high priest wore them every day, did not, wait. The high priest wore them every day but one, the day of atonement. Then he, when he took the blood before the Lord of God for the sins of all the people, he wore the plain white robe. This, too, is a reminder of the Lord Jesus. When he lived in heaven before coming to earth, he was clothed in majesty and glory. He, God the Son, was lifted above every angel in heaven. But when he came to take our sins upon himself, he laid aside that glory, just as the high priest laid aside his beautiful clothing on the Day of Atonement. So do you see that correlation? How the high priest had dressed, um, took off all of that to go before the Lord? Hmm. Let me read that part again. When he came, when Jesus came to take our sins upon himself, he laid aside the glory, the beauty, just as the high priest laid aside his beautiful clothing on the Day of Atonement. Because remember, the Day of Atonement was when he went into the holiest of holy places where God dwelt um, to offer sacrifice for the people. And Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. After Christ died for our sins, he arose from the grave. Now he is in heaven. And the glory which had belonged to him before he humbled himself and came down to earth is restored to him. Phineas thought about the time Moses had dressed his grandfather Aaron in the high priest's garments. What a glorious day that had been. It was the day when the tabernacle had first been set up. Thousands and thousands of men and women, boys and girls, were there. The curtains had been put together, the pillars set up, and the altar set in place. Then when everything was completed, God's glory cloud filled the tabernacle. No person could enter the tabernacle, not even Moses or the high priest, as long as the cloud filled the building. For it was God himself filling the whole place. Finally, the cloud lifted and rested above the Holy of Holies. There it stayed as a sign that God was present with his people. Phineas knew he would never forget that day. There had been many things for you to learn about the tabernacle through our stories, through this wonderful lesson, about this wonderful movable tent. We hope that you, like Phineas, will never forget. You have not seen the building nor taken part in this worship as Phineas did, so it will be harder for you to remember. But ask God to remind you of those lessons and the truths that you have learned. Wow, so let me show you. Let's see, there's a picture of the high priest in here. There he is. So there's the whole, here's another picture of the whole get up. There it is. And then there, that shows you the breastplate, see? And then here's Jesus. How about that? Pretty cool how we can relate everything from the Old Testament, pointing straight to Jesus. Isn't that cool? I sure think so. And see here, here's what we were talking about. So here's where we said Aaron went into the holiest of holy places, right? Back where God dwelt in here. And see what he has on? The white linen. He took this off to be able to go before God, into the presence of God. Pretty cool. Pretty cool how we learn so many things. And you know why we can learn those things? Because of the Bible. That's right. Because the Bible tells us these things. It's a great book. So we've learned these lessons from Bible Visuals International. And this is the Tabernacle, a picture of the Lord Jesus, part two.
go. And the first one talked about the outside and all of that. So, thank you for learning with me about the high priest. Pretty interesting, all the different parts and how they all have a special meaning. You know, when I think about all of that, I've told you before, and I'll tell you again. Man, I sure am thankful every Sunday when we go to church to worship. We don't have to take a cow or a goat or a dove. And why is that? Why don't we have to do that like they did at the tabernacle in the wilderness? Or the... Because Jesus died for us. That's right. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He did that for us. So now we don't, we don't have to do all that because he did it for us. Jesus paid the price for us. He took the place of our punishment and he paid the price for our sins and that's why it's different now because of Jesus because not only did he come and live on the earth but he died and rose again that's right and so now we have a promise of hope of eternal life in heaven we have a promise of eternal life in heaven with God in the present we can be excuse me we can be connected with God because of Jesus remember we talked about how the veil tore God ripped it because he's no longer separated from his people. We can be and talk to him anytime. Because Jesus paid the price for us. What good news. The best news ever, right? Okay, guys. I am going to let you go. Don't forget to bring your passport on Wednesday. We're going to talk about New Zealand. Don't forget to check out the website, frommisskim.com. Um, our chapels are listed there. All the materials from this weekend, from Sunday, are listed there. I put our Wednesday information there, and I've started creating some games. I've got one that's ready to post. I'm going to post it today. So there's some review games on there for you. Some of them um, might even be from this summer when we were doing lessons about um, anatomy and different things. Okay, So check out those games. They're really fun. Now, for those games, they're through Kahoot. So your device, you would put the Kahoot app on your device. You ask your parents first, of course. And then the, your device, whether it be your iPad or your phone, whatever, um, works as your controller for the game on the screen. It's pretty cool how it works. So check that out because it's it's great review for you all. And it's really simple once you get it all set up. Um, you just click on the link there, put in your number that it's going to give you on, on your device, and you can use it as your remote. Really sweet. So check out the website. There's lots of good stuff there for you guys. Parents, there's good stuff for you. Grandparents, good stuff for you. Ministry leaders, good stuff for you. So check it out. Um, I'm, I'm doing my very best to load it with great information for you guys to be able to use in your homes and for your self-growth, okay, for your, your spiritual growth personally. So make sure you check it out. There's also a place there for you to list prayer requests. So if you've got a prayer request you didn't think of today, you can put it on there on the prayer page. Uh, in any of the comments. So, check it out for me, okay? And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you on Wednesday. Be sweet and shine bright for Jesus. Bye, guys. Love you.